Hello and welcome to The Cauldron. So tonight's episode is um, very exciting because we've just had a protest today, a demonstration outside the Scottish Parliament. And this follows on from a protest we had on Tuesday, which was a demonstration outside the Sheriff Court in Glasgow in solidarity and support of Marion Miller. Marion Miller, as you may know, is a woman that has been charged. What we can say about her case is being continued to the 4th of October. And her lawyer, who's Joanna Cherry, is, um, is questioning whether the charges breach Marion's human rights. So it may be <laughs> that when Joanna Cherry gets a ruling from a judge, it may protect all of us because if Marion's human rights have been breached, then that ruling will mean that all of our human rights will be protected. It's a terrible, terrible thing for Marion and just like the most awful experience that she has to go through and it's getting dragged out longer and longer. She only found out what the charges were 10 minutes before she was due to appear in court and they've changed the original charge. She has Joanna Cherry on her side. And as we know, Joanna Cherry has beat the UK government twice, once on revoking Article 50 and the second on the prorogation of Parliament. Therefore, I'm going to back Joanna Cherry any day of the week against Nicola Sturgeon. Today, we were at the Scottish Parliament for a demonstration in, you know, against GRA reform, self-ID, which is the ability of a man to say he's a woman and just be accepted as a woman. So let's hear from Marion Collar from For Women Scotland, who organised this demonstration. So Marion, congratulations on a very successful demonstration. What's your thoughts for, about today? Uh, first of all, I just want to say a um, massive thank you to all the women and the men who actually turned up to support us today. Absolutely incredible show of support. I'm still giving here. Cheers to you all. That, honestly, job well done. Couldn't be any more proud. Really, really happy. And obviously, you can see in the background we're all relaxing at the moment. So, happy days. There was quite a few MSPs came out. What kind of reaction did they have? Um, the overwhelming comments that they were having for MSPs came out with the sheer numbers. They had never seen this kind of wealth of number to be. So I think it was genuine shock and surprise. I think they've been told that there's only about four or five individuals, should mean that maybe just a bit vocal on Twitter and we're all suck accounts. Um, well, yeah, clearly not. So I think it really was a, a, a bit of an eye opening. MSPs you spoke to, were they interested in our point of view? The MSPs that came out were, they were actually listening to kind of a multiple women that came from across Scotland and, and, I, and I was overhearing some conversations that were going on from women and, and they were raising their concerns about kind of single sex spaces, impact of GRA reform, the hate crime bill, the fact this has a chilling effect. Um, so uh, it was all very interesting listening to kind of different viewpoints that each woman had on this kind of ideology of self-ID. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they took away from that and I'm hoping they actually paid attention and will go away and uh, read some more. So do you think the MSPs will be able to help us? Well of course they can. They can kind of raise questions on women's behalf, they can highlight kind of issues that their constituents will raise with them. Um, I would ask all, um, everyone as usual to contact all three MSPs and ask the questions and ask them to represent the, your views and ask that maybe there's some tough questions but they need to be asked. And what would your message be to uh, Nicola Sturgeon? Women won't wish <laughs> Nicola ever. Today was an awesome day. Women from across all political parties, all spectrums, all ages came together to actually say to kind of Scottish Parliament say, you will listen to us, you will listen to our views, no longer will we shut up. Women won't wish, we were there and we will go bigger and bigger and bigger every time. 
And here's a little extract from Lisa's speech. What is a woman? Well, I don't know, someone with a vagina. Apparently that's wrong and that makes me transphobic. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm mainly here just to sort of say, you know, everyone thinks that students are all woke and all think women don't have vaginas, women have got something else. Um, so I'm here to say we do have vaginas and we don't have free speech in university. <laughs> I am obviously 29, I was a student, and I can say that there is no free speech in university. The majority of the students are all of this ideology that we've got unicorns between our legs or something, but um, there is some sensible ones there, so don't judge all students, some of us are alright, some of us actually know biology. Um, Contrary to what people said, obviously the questions I was asked are, did you say that men are physically stronger than women? Well, yeah, I did, because they are. I am a woman. I was a mechanic. And believe it or not, the men were stronger than me. Um, so, who knew? And, um, yeah, so that, that's literally all I said. I never said anything transphobic. I, I wasn't the misogynist they said I was. I was just a realist. I said what is true, what is biological, and what I believe. I'll never back down and yeah. and women won't waste. And um, Claire, you were at the Scottish Parliament. How did you enjoy your day out? Oh, hi. Good evening, everyone. Um, so this is the well, actually, I have been to a few other demos now, um, but only in the context of the gender wars. Um, so today's event was just magnificent. I mean, it was just wonderful to see so many women, old and young, men, even some dogs, um, you know, just everyone came together. It was a fantastic atmosphere. The speeches were incredible um, and just really enjoyable day. And I have to say, no trouble at all. Um, just had a great time. Yeah, really very, very glad that I made the effort to come down to Edinburgh to, to attend. And um, what's the reaction been online to the demo today? I've seen uh, lots of lots of pictures, lots of approving likes, uh, but also I've seen some, hmm, shall we say, questionable tweets for, from some in the SMP. <laughs> Absolutely. Um... You know, I've got videos and pictures. We've, we've all got those. Mm -hmm. To my knowledge, there's been no arrests. It was completely peaceful, completely respectful. There were there was a small um, amount of um, trans right activists there. They were completely safe. Um, you know, they were in one corner, apart from one person who kind of came into our area. But at no time were they threatened, they, you know. Lisa, you were at the demo today as well. So what did you think of, of it? And uh, what other news do you have this week? Yeah, I was at the demo. I had a great time at the demo, actually. Everyone was so friendly and welcoming. There was a small incident where one of the trans rights activists did come into our crowd. And um, again, they were completely safe. Um, it does make me wonder, so looking at Twitter, they said that they were not safe in a chemist because somebody had a purple t-shirt on. So why they would come into a, a sea of purple if it's so unsafe is beyond me. Um, and also this week, I had emailed Graham Day. He's the SMB MSP for Angus. And I emailed him asking him for some quotes and thoughts on the Gender Recognition Act. He wasn't really sure what I meant, so we clarified that I wanted his thoughts on it. And in, in the end, he actually wrote me an email back. Um, he said that his thoughts are simple. There needs, there is need for reform. But he said on both sides, there's very disrespectful language um, on both sides, which I've never seen disrespectful language from our side, um, to which I thanked him for his email um, with the details that he'd given me and I asked him what a woman is um, or was at the time and this was two days ago he has not got back to me yet so I can only conclude that Graham Day does not know what a woman is because it's taken him so long to reply. <laughs> I read quite a disturbing article in the Daily Mail um, it was a little boy uh, his name I forget now I think it was Jacob 
and his mum has said, you know, he wanted to grow his hair and she's been trying to get him to do boy things and she just can't get him to do the things that typical boys do. So now she's happy for him to transition into a girl. She has him dressed in very sultry clothing. Um, not the way I would dress my daughter if I had one, but that each to their own. Um, fake eyelashes, you know, makeup on and everything. He's only eight. And she did say when he gets to the, the ripe age where he can start taking cross-sex hormones, she's happy to do so. Oh God. So I seen, I don't know if it's the same boy, but I seen one where a, a mother was saying that her child had tried to cut his penis off when his, his baby sister was born. And it was just such a, and so now he, she's dressing him as a girl. And it, that's such a, such a strange thing because there was some person, a person in child protection says if a child is trying to harm their genitals, it's a real red flag, it's, it can often be child abuse, and you know that should be reported straight away. And the other thing about it is, is, is you know, like, you know, maybe he's jealous of his sister getting attention, which, you know, a child often is when the, the new sibling comes along. So that just seems totally bizarre to me that a mother would take a child trying to chop their willy off as, oh, well, he wants to be a girl rather than this child has some psychological problems going on. Mm -hmm. You know, it seems like the mother has psychological problems here. So that's just, I mean, I, I don't even, I can't even react to it because it's so ridiculous. So Claire, um, about the reaction to the demo today online, um, we have, there's been some sort of questionable tweets from some people in the SNP. Yes, um, I think they were completely misleading because the demonstration that I attended today is not the demonstration that I recognised through reading the tweets, um, especially one of an MSP called Karen Adam. Yeah. Um, so I did pass comment um, on the cauldron to, to say, you know, that that is not what we saw. But, you know, she basically, as far as I'm aware, not a single SNP MSP attended today. And this person looked out the window and decided that we were some sort of howling, screaming mob. And she's tweeting people to say, you know, please be careful, you know, don't, don't walk, um, don't walk alone. You know, as if there's some huge problem with women outside mm. trying to be heard. You know, let's think about why we were there today. You know, we're not there to cause trouble. We're not there to um, shout down anybody. We want discussion. We want to talk about this. We're there because we are not able to have a discussion. And these MSPs will stand to account for this because we will we will not be silenced on it you know this has gone far too far and we need to start talking and when we start talking it shines a very big bright light on the dangers of this ideology now why were we there today well we, we're there because we object to queer theory in school these are not beliefs Gravity is not a belief, it's a fact, and so is sex. And no one is going to tell us different, okay? So why were we there? So we're there because of that. We object to male people in prisons raping women. That's happening in Scotland right now. There are men in prison, the female estate. Girls and women are disadvantaged now in sports because men are identifying as women. School, the school teaching actually says, who, you know, defines a woman as anyone who wants to be one. There's no such definition for men. It's only for women. Women are half the population. We do not need permission from men to exist. And we certainly do not need men redefining what it is to be a woman. Now, I'm angry tonight, actually, at all of this, because it's, you know, we get called bigots, we get called transphobes. We are nothing of the sort. What we're saying is trans activism can be exploited. That's a big difference from being a transphobe. Most trans, you know, we, we have trans people today on our side, yeah? They understand our genuine 
concerns about what these reforms will mean for women and for girls and for children. Safeguarding is important and safeguarding needs to be done on the basis of sex, not gender. Gender is just a personality. How the hell can you legislate for gender in law? You know, if people have got ovarian cancer, breast cancer, period issues, um, menopause, these are all female issues. S sister, I believe, transitioned to male and then just did not appreciate really that, that they're still biologically female and died from ovarian cancer because they wrongly put down their, their, their sex. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to save people from themselves sometimes, you know. Um, what is a bigot? You know, for God's sake, a bigot is someone who's unreasonably attached to a belief, uh, an opinion, um, you know, and basically um, are antagonistic towards another group. I do not see that in the gender critical movement. I see that in the TRA movement. I see that in the SNP allies. They don't want to talk. All they, all they ever say to us is that we're transphobes, we're TERFs, we're this, we're that. No, we are not. None of these MSPs that, the, like Graham Day, that you asked, what is a woman? Graham Day knows perfectly well what a woman is. He could have replied, adult, human, female. Humza Yusuf knows there are two sexes. Why are they lying to us? Why are they covering this up? Why are they telling us lies? Because that's what they're doing. They're mm -hmm. lying to us. And we know they're lying to us. We know they know what a woman is. And we know they know how many sexes there are. And they're pretending, they're gaslighting us. They're pretending that they don't know. This is our MSPs. Why on earth do we elect these people? Really, why yeah. on earth do we elect them? They're, that they, you know, it's astonishing to me the, the quality of people that we have elected into that parliament because people that will not stand up and just state basic facts or truth and will lie to you when you ask them direct questions. What kind mm -hmm. of caliber is that? And then, of course, we do have the trouble with queer theory being pushed in schools. Radicalising children, you know, some of these trans rights people today, I honestly just felt so heart sorry for them. They should not be worrying about raising money to chop off their own breasts, for God's sake. They should be having fun as young adults, looking forward to an amazing life and getting everything they can out of life, not worrying about all of this, it's, it's wrong, it's so wrong. I think you would find that in the old statistics, but I think it will be different now, probably be even more stark, is that for every 10 um, children presenting as trans, um, only one will go one. on to yeah. need, to need um, surgery or medication. So that's nine, nine children that you're medicalizing unnecessary. But the thing about it is, is most of these nine children, they will, by the late teens, they'll be happy lesbians and happy gay men. Yeah. It's, it is conversion therapy. Good old fashioned homophobia, where sexual preference is a choice and it's not a choice. <laughs> And obviously there's confusion with children, in, in, you know, in puberty and it's natural for them to be confused, in particular if they're homosexuals. And, uh, you know, it's natural for the girl to feel that she should look like a boy because that way girls will fancy her. But of course, what she doesn't realise is lesbians will fancy her <laughs> anyway you know so she just should just stay a girl and be a lesbian that's what she is uh, so yeah so um lisa more information for you about your week just kind of wanted to add on to what was said as well 
everybody saying that there's there's not just two sexes, but the trans rights activists today, they knew what a woman was because they sent a woman into our crowd knowing that the police would not put hands on her and wouldn't be rough with her because she was a woman. So they seem to know what a woman is when it suits them. And I, that really annoyed me. And another thing that's really bothering me is a lot of these trans rights activists are women. They're handing their rights away. Why are they mm. doing this? Like, it makes no sense. Why would they want to hand their own rights away? And one other thing I won't actually quickly say is today, the, the uh, demo was great. I got handed this um, <laughs> from somebody in the crowd. She went out her way and got it for me. And I thought that was just the sweetest thing ever. Um, so I, I just want to say thank you to her, but I'm not going to use her name. Yeah, so on the subject of like really, really terrible MSPs that lie to you um, and they don't come out, as Claire said, you know, they're cowardice. None of, not a single SMP MP came out to speak to the crowd. They were all written to and also some SMP members were in the crowd. But not a single SNP MSP had the guts to come out. A reasonable amount of Tories who um, I think were interested to hear really what we had to say. And the Tory, I spoke to a couple of them, and um, he did tell me he was going to go and do more research. A Tory I spoke to. And I think the other, some of the other Tories are a little bit up more up on it and already like understand the issues so it is really a strange day for women where you know the people that will talk to us are the Tories <laughs> like, but I can't be you know critical of them because they did come and speak to us for, so good for them Alba MP Neil Hanvey was at the demonstration and of course he has been a very very strong advocate for women's rights for a very long time. Neil Hanvey was one of the very first male MPs to understand the consequences of self-ID and he actually tried to build bridges. He talked to Out for Indy and he talked through For Women Scotland and he was in the middle of trying to build bridges to resolve the conflicts in this debate when he was uh, smeared by the SMP and uh, you know smeared badly by the First Minister. So Lisa, um, some more words from you. <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted to add that we do actually have the support of a couple of other small parties as well. We've got ISP and Restore Scotland, they're both back in Women's Corner. And um, there's probably more, but that's the only two I can think of off the top of my head. So there's, good ex there's a good chance at the council election time to elect candidates that will protect women's rights and protect children in schools, because the councils actually implement the Scottish government policies in a lot of areas. So that will be our big chance. And the system of voting in the council elections means small parties do have a chance of winning councillors, but also independents can win councillors as well. So again, if we had independents standing that were there to protect women's rights, I feel that is what we need to focus on and try to do politically, to get as many pro-women mm -hmm. candidates as possible elected in me. Yeah, yeah, we do. So Claire, do you have any final words today? I do, I think, Following on from what you've just said, I think politicians are going to have to listen to us because we're not going anywhere. There is a huge appetite for change and women are not going to wished. We're not going away. We're only going to get louder and louder and our voices will be amplified as we talk. And I would say to anyone watching, keep talking because talking is shining the light that we need for everyone to wake up from this absolute disaster of policies that has been introduced into school. I want to say one thing quickly, there are only two sexes and people bandy this idea around about a third sex and um, being intersex. That is so disrespectful to intersex people because those people, they have developed their sexual um, organs have not developed normally but they are still either female or they are male and to my mind those people have the right to decide whichever path they choose 
you know, they, it's such a tiny minority of people and such an unfortunate medical condition. And trans activists have latched onto that, colonised that as well as attempting to colonise women. And that really has to stop. And then the very final thing I want to say is this idea that grown men are vulnerable and somehow um, unsafe around women is just the most preposterous idea I have ever heard. And I'm sick to death of hearing it. Okay, the statistics worldwide for women who are murdered by men, it's about 90,000 a year, and that's just what we record. Now, I think the only statistics we have for trans people is from 2019, and I believe worldwide the figure was 350. Zero in the UK, I might add. Uh, 37, I think, in the US, and the majority was in South America, and those people were actually sex workers, which is always going to be a high, because a very, very high risk, dangerous profession, which I might add is not, sex work is not work. That is obscene, but that's for another day. <laughs> that's it for me. Okay. So Lisa, what, how would you like to end this? For me, I want to say two things probably three actually. Um, I spoke with a couple of lovely conservative MSPs today and uh, they took their time to listen and that was really great. Um, and obviously Graham Day, if you're watching this, can you please email me back and tell me what a woman is? And also I just wanted to say to all the parents out there, get into your schools, find out what your children are being taught. You need Absolutely. to know. You, you need to know because it's paramount. Like your children are being told that there's like 178 genders, I think it was this morning when I checked. There are, gender is a social construct, it's nothing. It's, you know, gender is just a feeling. There is two sexes, male and female. One has a penis, one has a vagina. It's not rocket science to work out which is which. Okay. So my final thoughts tonight are with Marion Miller and the horrendous ordeal she's going through and with Joanna Cherry, who is like the most incredibly brave MP. The, one of the very few MPs that are telling everyone the truth and are standing up for women and what's right. And she's standing against the orthodoxy in her party and she's the only one brave enough. But um, so with Marion Miller and Joanna Cherry, that's who my thoughts are with tonight. Thank you very much for watching this episode of The Cauldron. And of course, it's been an exciting episode because we are just back from the demo. So we are like full of ideas. So I will, um, we will see you next week for the next episode of The Cauldron. Bye for now.